And the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the first month of the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the sons of Israel keep the Passover at its appointed time. On the fourteenth day of this month, in the evening, ye shall keep it at its appointed time, according to all its statutes, and all its ordinances you shall keep it. So Moses told the sons of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover in the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, in the evening, in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So the sons of Israel did. And there were certain men who were unclean through touching the dead body of a man, so that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and Aaron on that day. And those men said to him, We are unclean through touching the dead body of a man. Why are we kept from offering the Lord's offering at its appointed time among the sons of Israel? And Moses said to them, Wait, that I may hear what the Lord will command concerning you. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the sons of Israel, If any man of you or of your descendants is unclean through touching a dead body or is afar off on a journey, he shall still keep the Passover to the Lord. In the second month, on the fourteenth day, in the evening, they shall keep it. They shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it until the morning, nor break a bone of it. According to all the statute for the Passover, they shall keep it. But the man who is clean and is not on a journey, yet refrains from keeping the Passover, that person shall be cut off from his people, because he did not offer the Lord's offering at its appointed time. That man shall bear his sin. And if a stranger sojourns among you, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, according to the statute of the Passover, and according to its ordinance, so shall he do. You shall have one statute, both for the sojourner and for the native. On the day that the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant, and at evening it was over the tabernacle, like the appearance of fire until morning. So it was continually. The cloud covered it by day, and the appearance of fire by night. And whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tent, after that the sons of Israel set out, and in the place where the cloud settled down, there the sons of Israel encamped. At the command of the Lord, the sons of Israel set out, and at the command of the Lord, they encamped as long as the cloud rested over the tabernacle. They remained in camp. Even when the cloud continued over the tabernacle, many days the sons of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was a few days over the tabernacle, and according to the command of the Lord, they remained in camp. Then, according to the command of the Lord, they set out. And sometimes the cloud remained from evening until morning, and when the cloud was taken up in the morning, they set out. Or if it continued for a day and a night, when the cloud was taken up, they set out. Whether it was two days, or a month, or a longer time, that the cloud continued over the tabernacle, abiding there, the sons of Israel remained in camp and did not set out. But when it was taken up, they set out. At the command of the Lord, they encamped. And at the command of the Lord, they set out. They kept the charge of the Lord at the command of the Lord by Moses. The Lord said to Moses, Make two silver trumpets of hammered work, you shall make them. And you shall use them for summoning the congregation and for breaking camp. And when both are blown, all the congregation shall gather themselves to you at the entrance of the tent of meeting. But if they blow only once, then the leaders, the heads of the tribes of Israel, shall gather themselves to you. When you blow an alarm, the camps that are on the east side shall set out. And when you blow an alarm the second time, the camps that are on the south side shall set out. An alarm is to be blown whenever they are to set out. But when the assembly is to be gathered together, you shall blow but you shall not sound the alarm. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow the trumpets. The trumpets shall be to you for a perpetual statute throughout your generations. And when you go to war in your land against the adversary who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets, that you may be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. On the day of your gladness also, and at your appointed feasts, and at the beginnings of your months, you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings. They shall serve you for remembrance before your God. I am the Lord your God. In the second year, in the second month, on the twentieth day of the month, the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle of the covenant, and the sons of Israel set out by stages from the wilderness of Sinai. 
and the cloud settled down in the wilderness of Paran. They set out for the first time at the command of the Lord by Moses. The standard of the camp of the men of Judah set out first by their companies, and over their host was Nashon the son of Amminadab, and over the host of the tribe of the men of Issachar was Nethanel the son of Zuar. And over the host of the tribe of the men of Zebulun was Eliab, the son of Helon. And when the tabernacle was taken down, the sons of Gershon and the sons of Merari, who carried the tabernacle, set out. And the standard of the camp of Reuben set out by their companies. And over their host was Elizer, the son of Shadur. And over the host of the tribe of the men of Simeon was Shalumiel, the son of Zerushadai. And over the host of the tribe of the men of Gad was Eliasaph, the son of Duel. Then the Kohathites set out, carrying the holy things, and the tabernacle was set up before their arrival. And the standard of the camp of the men of Ephraim set out by their companies, and over their host was Elishama, the son of Amiahud. And over the host of the tribe of the men of Manasseh was Gamaliel, the son of Padashur. And over the host of the tribe of the men of Benjamin was Abidan, the son of Gideoni. Then the standard of the camp of the men of Dan, acting as the rear guard of all the camps, set out by their companies, and over their host was Ahizer, the son of Amishidai. And over the host of the tribe of the men of Asher was Pagiel, the son of Akron. And over the host of the tribe of the men of Naphtali was Ahira, the son of Enon. This was the order of march of the sons of of Israel according to their hosts when they set out. And Moses said to Hobab, the son of Ruel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, We are setting out for the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us, and we will do you good. For the Lord has promised good to Israel. But he said to him, I will not go. I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. And he said, Do not leave us, I beg you, for you know how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and you will serve as eyes for us. And if you go with us, whatever good the Lord will do to us, the same will we do to you. So they set out from the mount of the Lord three days' journey, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them three days' journey, to seek out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was over them by day, whenever they set out from the camp. And whenever the ark set out, Moses said, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them who hate you flee before you. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, to the ten thousand thousands of Israel. To the choir master with stringed instruments, a maskal of David. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and answer me. I am overcome by my trouble. I am distraught by the noise of the enemy because of the oppression of the wicked. For they bring trouble upon me, and in my anger they cherish enmity against me. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me, and horror overwhelms me. And I say, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Yes, I would wander afar. I would lodge in the wilderness. Selah. I would wait for him who saves me from the raging wind and tempest. Destroy their plans, O Lord, confuse their tongues, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it on its walls, and mischief and trouble are within it. Ruin is in its midst. Oppression and fraud do not depart from its marketplace. It is not an enemy who taunts me, then I could bear it. It is not an adversary who deals insolently with me, then I could hide from him. But it is you, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. We used to hold sweet converse together. Within God's house we walked in fellowship. Let death come upon them. Let them go down to Sheol alive. Let them go away in terror into their graves. But I call upon God, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon I utter my complaint and moan, and he will hear my voice. He will deliver my soul in safety from the battle that I wage, for many are arrayed against me. God will give ear and humble them, he who is enthroned from of old, because they keep no law, and do not fear God. Selah. My companion stretched out his hand against his friends. He violated his covenant. His speech was smoother than butter, yet war was in his heart. 
His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O Lord, will cast them down into the lowest pit. Men of blood and treachery shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in you. In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered, and they had nothing to eat, he called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way, and some of them have come a long way. And his disciples answered him, How can one feed these men with bread here in the desert? And he asked them, How many loaves have you? They said, Seven. And he commanded the crowd to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he broke them, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they set them before the crowd, and they had a few small fish, and having blessed them, he commanded that they also should be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied, and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. And there were about four thousand people. And he sent them away, and immediately he got into the boat with his disciples, and went to the district of Dalmanutha. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Truly, I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. And he left them, and getting into the boat again, he departed to the other side. Now they had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they discussed it with one another, saying, We have no bread. And being aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why do you discuss the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? They said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, Seven. And he said to them, Do you not yet understand? The cloud rises from the tabernacle, and Israel departs at last from Sinai. It is time to follow the Lord through the wilderness. Jesus also prepares a way for the people by, again, multiplying loaves. Later, Jesus seems frustrated when the disciples fail to solve what looks like an odd riddle. What do these numbers mean? Five and twelve point to Israel, twelve tribes nourished by the five books of Moses. Seven, on the other hand, hints at universality. Seven days in a week, and the seventy nations listed in Genesis 10. The bread Jesus provides for his way is for all peoples. Gentiles will receive not only the crumbs as the Syrophoenician woman requests, but enough bread to be satisfied with plenty left over. There's another twist. St. Mark says the disciples had only one loaf with them in the boat, but two verses later they say they have no bread. They don't yet understand that Jesus himself is the bread that will feed all nations. Psalm 55 paints a vivid picture of the pain of betrayal, a pain Jesus endures at Judas's hands so that he can become our bread of life. Do you trust Jesus to sustain you as bread for your way, even amid deep pain?